Hi guys, today we're going to make a delicious vegan amuse. It's a reddish and sesam meringue with a cashew nut cream, puff quinoa and a Madeira jelly. So, let's begin. First, we're going to make the vegan reddish and sesam meringue. For that, take a big bowl of radishes and remove all the stems till you have 500 grams of cleaned radish. Now wash it well to remove any dirt or bugs. Then transfer it into a blender and also add 140 grams of sushi vinegar, 6 grams of salt and 20 sizo purple leaves. Blend this till smooth. This takes around 2 minutes. Now turn off the blender and pass it through a fine sieve. Use a ladle to be sure that you don't waste any liquid. And then keep it in your fridge for later. Then the vegan meringue powder. Take 800 grams of canned chickpeas and drain them on a silicon sheet. You'll need at least 400 grams of liquid. Keep the chickpeas for later. Now let the liquid dry at 50 degrees Celsius for a couple of hours. Once it's dry, transfer it into a blender and blend it into a fine powder. Now pour 200 grams of the reddish juice into a measuring cup and also add 30 grams of the meringue powder and 70 grams of icing sugar. Mix it with a hand blender till it's completely smooth and it starts to become lighter in color. Then pour it into a stand mixer and beat it till it's completely stiff. This takes at least 5 minutes. Once it's fluffy and firm, transfer it into a piping bag fitted with a small round nozzle. Now pipe small dots on the silicon sheet and make sure that you keep some space in between the dots. Season with some flaky salt and then dry them at 50 degrees Celsius for at least 6 hours. I always dry them overnight. Now take your reddish trimmings and transfer them into a bowl. Season well with salt. Mix it. Then transfer the tatar on a silicon sheet and place another sheet on top. Spread this with a rolling pin and then let it set in your freezer. Then the puff quinoa. Season a pan with water with salt and boil some white quinoa till it's completely cooked. The quinoa really needs to be soft. Once cooked, drain it and rinse it well on the cold water. Then transfer it onto a silicon sheet and spread it. Now dry it at 50 degrees Celsius for a couple of hours. Don't dry it in the same oven as the meringue, because then the meringue will be soggy and flat. Give it a good mix every now and then, this so they don't stick together. Once dry, deep fry the quinoa at 210 degrees Celsius and directly pour the oil through a fine sieve into another pan. Then transfer it onto a kitchen paper and repeat the process with the remaining quinoa. Be careful, because the oil is very hot. Now season with salt and keep it dry and covered for later. Then the Madeira jelly. First weigh the weight of your saucepan and add 100 grams of Madeira. My total weight is now 900 grams. Then reduce 50 grams of Madeira. The weight is now 850 grams. This is always a smart and easy way to check the reduction process. Now add 25 grams of a dark ponzu, 50 grams of vegetable broth, 1 gram of salt and 0.8 grams of agar powder. Mix this and then bring it to a boil for 1 minute. Meanwhile, apply a thin layer of oil on a metal tray and then weigh 50 grams of the liquid on each tray. Use a blowtorch to remove any air bubbles and then let it set completely in your fridge. Once set, cut it with a small round cutter and remove the trimmings. After that, take the ready tatar and cut it with the same small round cutter. Place it on top of the jelly and keep them in your fridge for later. Now the cashew nut cream. Transfer 50 grams of cashew nuts into a blender together with 30 grams of chickpeas, 2 grams of salt, 
15 grams of sushi vinegar and 80 grams of vegetable broth. Blend this till it's completely smooth. Then transfer it into a piping bag, fit it with a small round nozzle and let it set in your fridge. Now the crispy sizo leaves. Mix 20 grams of tempura flour with 20 grams of water and mix this well till it's a smooth batter. Then take some small sizo purple leaves and portion them into the desired size. Add them to the batter and cover them with a thin layer of the batter. Now deep fry them at 160 degrees Celsius till golden and crispy. Then transfer them on a the kitchen paper, season with salt and keep them dry and covered for later. Once the meringue is dry, let it cool down and then remove them from the silicon sheet. Use a grater to make the top a bit flat. Then put the jelly and the reddish tartar on top and pipe a dot of the cashew cream on there. Sprinkle some quinoa on the cream and press the crispy sizo in the middle. And then last, decorate the muses with oxalis flowers, also known as purple sorrel. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm really pleased with the result. The, the meringue turned out really, really well. Um, I didn't expect it to be that shiny and that, uh, that stiff actually. Um, you can add a little bit less icing sugar if you think it's too sweet but it's not gonna be as stable as it is right now. Um, I think right now it's perfect like this, but if you think it's too sweet, add a little bit less, um, but be sure that you whip it like all the way. Just keep on beating the meringue for 10, 15 minutes. Um, you can't over whip it, so don't be, uh, don't be shy with that. Um, yeah, let's just dig in. The, uh, the little jelly I added just to give it a little bit of a protection layer from the reddish and for the cream because when you add a little bit of moisture to the meringue it's gonna turn soft. So this has been standing for 20-25 minutes and yeah, it's still super crunchy so that's really really good. Um, let's just do it. Mm. That's delicious. First you get the sweetness of the, of the reddish, of the tatar. Um, then you get the jelly, which brings a lot of depth. The, the cashew nut cream is really creamy, really nice. And yeah, it just brings all the flavors together. So the freshness, um, the sourness, because because the radish is pretty sour as well, so you need to be careful with that. Um, I think if you take homegrown radishes, those are much, those are so much more sharp than when you buy them at the store, so be careful with that. I bought these at the store, um, they're pretty mild in flavor, so if you use homegrown, they're gonna be much sharper. Um, I think maybe that's even better, but just be careful with that but they're really, really delicious. And the sizo on top, yeah, that's just a fun gimmick and it's really delicious as well. Yeah, so, but that's it for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please let me know in the comments on what you want to see next. Like and share the video and subscribe if you want to support my channel and see more amazing cooking videos. And as always, bon appetit.